What's up, everybody? This is Ralph Amesden, co-host of the Seatown Rivals podcast. We're about to be joined by Brett Quintine and Chili to talk about last week's action in Chandler area football. But before I do that, just a reminder that the Seatown Rivals podcast is brought to you by ArizonaVarsity.com, the Rivals affiliate site covering all Arizona high school football and basketball in the state of Arizona. You can support us by becoming a subscriber. Just jump on to ArizonaVarsity.com, and if you're not already a subscriber, uh, go ahead and subscribe. It costs about $8.33 a month to support all that we do. Subscribing to Arizona Varsity helps us bring you content just like what you're about to listen to. We are also part of the ArizonaSportsCast.com podcast network. ArizonaSportsCast.com hosts podcasts covering Chandler area football, like you're about to listen to with the Seatown Rivals podcast, as well as high school sports from around the state, the Arizona State Sun Devils, the Phoenix Suns, and Arizona Cardinals. So if you could go ahead and search for Arizona Sportscast on iTunes, become a subscriber, leave a review, that would be fantastic. Without further ado, let's get you to this week's episode of the Seatown Rivals podcast. High school football season is over and it ends on a very familiar note. The same note that it has ended on since the 2016 season and that's with a Chandler area team claiming a championship. In this case it's a repeat champion. One of our own has won the state championship for the fourth consecutive time. Brett Quintine here with the Seatown Rivals podcast and as always I'm joined by my guys Ralph Dams and then Chili and we talk championship caliber football each and every week. Well, guys, last week it was down to one, and we can proudly say that the Chandler Wolves have claimed their fourth straight title with a 42-35 win over the Saguaro Sabercats. Fellas, it's a rare time and perhaps the only time that all three of us are on the same game at the, excuse me, at the same game for the entire game. Let's get our thoughts. For me, of course, the Wolves, they came out swinging before we even really thought about it. They were up 21-0. There was a time I even thought, Chile, that this game was going to be a running clock. They never applied that knockout punch despite allowing 28 second half points. In the end, they still got it done. Chandler, 42-35. Yeah, and you know what? I expected the game to be close. I did pick Saguaro to win this game. Um, I thought that, you know, this being the deepest Saguaro team ever and all that talent that they had, um, I thought it would be enough to hold Chandler off for four quarters. The problem is, is that they couldn't hold them off for those first five and a half minutes when... Um, Chandler, like a pack of wolves, literally jumped all over Saguaro. And um, while Saguaro was able to recover, mm-hmm. they just couldn't fully recover. And I think, you know, digging yourself into a 21 nothing hole. Playing like, uphill battle for, all yeah, game long. It's been difficult for anybody. Um, you know, Jacoby Covington showed some fight, you know, uh-huh. with that big hit on uh, Day Day. And uh, you don't see Day Day put the ball on the carpet too often. Nope. So, um, you know, hey, so, Saguaro showed some grit, something that, you know, I, I don't think a lot of us. Um, around the valley have really uh, had to see at any point um, mm-hmm. throughout you know uh, Monza's career like some real real grit where you know they're battling back where they have to dig deep uh, where they have to look at themselves in the mirror and you know figure out who they are and because no team <clears throat> down twenty one nothing would have cut it to within seven at any point I mean, we, opinion, against we, Chandler we, we've seen Chandler put a lot of teams down twenty one nothing and a lot of them pack up fold right. up and are ready to head back to the locker room or the buses or back home or wherever like. Um, <laughs> You know, what Chandler has over there is... Eat that donut. Yeah. They, yeah, they, 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 yeah, and they're, they're willing to do it. They, they don't they don't want to do it no more. They don't want to jump back in for the next, you know, three quarters because, you know, it, it, it's hard to deal with. Um, you know, so this Chandler team is... Uh, the defense is beyond special. Mm-hmm. It is beyond special. And I think, you know, uh, led by Brandon Buckner. I mean, they're, they're led by a bunch of people. Uh, Romney, Reed, or um, Tyler, like... But, man, what Brandon Buckner does out there, he's so gifted. I, I cannot wait to see. Uh, Pick where, six gifted. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, just right place at the right time, um, making sure that he can put his teammates in the right place at the right time, uh, eating up quarterbacks, running backs. I mean, he does it all out there. Uh, one of my favorite defensive players of the year. Um, I, man, I, I can't say enough about him. And, you know, Chandler's going to be – 
you know, super amazing on defense next year. Mm-hmm. I know that I know that I said that this year was the best defense I had ever seen over there. And I think But the cupboard is still there. And I it's think the way there. they came out in that first quarter, I think they kind of backed that up. I know that Saguaro did come back, but great teams are gonna are gonna do that, you know, and if the roles were reversed, you know, it would have happened the other way too. So um, you know, I know they lose uh, Reed and Romney and um Maldonado, but Man, they got they got a whole slew of kids, you know, ready He's to strong. start eating and ready to start running like these wolves do. Absolutely, Mr. Ralph, your thoughts on the forty-two thirty-five victory? I, mean, I got a lot of thoughts on this game, but um, you know, just you know, focusing on Chandler because that's what this podcast is about. Uh-huh. Um, they that first quarter was it, it was impressive, and it was really all they needed to kind of. Um, end up having to hang on tight. Tyler Beverett and Will Schaefer offensively for Silvaro late in that game really, really helped them, um, you know, get back into it and make a game of it. But, you know, that first quarter was pure dominance. Uh-huh. And uh, and and you you have to credit Chandler, regardless of whether Silvaro came back or not, you have to credit Chandler for that fury, or, you know, that furious run that they went on and, and for getting a 71-yard run on the first um, play the game, you know. Had there not been a had there not been a fumble on a vicious Jacoby Covington, former Chandler Wolf, uh, on a vicious Jacoby oh, wow, Covington yeah. hit on a running back, you know, then there probably wouldn't have even been a chance for Silvaro to come back in. That 100%. First, right, that made it twenty eight potentially. Yeah, first quarter was amazing, and that's what you have to when you when you're the bigger batter team, you got to come out and you know, of course, people are going to make adjustments, but the first quarter is part of the game. You know, people mm-hmm. hold up yeah, yeah. fist for, for for quarter four. But, you know, how you start matters just as much as how you finish. And speaking of, you know, how they finished, that offensive line uh, led them on about, what, like a five, six-minute drive to, to score that final. Yes, down. that was key. That was very key. To put them up 14 in the fourth quarter with about four minutes left. And that that was everything. Was, there, it, was it two fourth down conversions or just the one? I know that they had a couple of third and shorts and a fourth yeah, down. As well. At least one fourth I know fourth yeah. down, yeah. Yeah, but they came was, up clutch. I mean and, and it wasn't like it wasn't like Sawara was playing bad football. If you can hold Chandler to two, three yards a run, it's not something that anybody else has been able to do all year long. But if they get three three yard or four three yard runs in a row, that's first down. That's correct. And so, you know, I thought I thought that Sawara showed a lot of guts on that final drive and it ultimately just didn't matter because Chandler overpowered them. Um you know they 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 came out ran past them in the first quarter and then overpowered them in the in the fourth. Um, a lot of credit I think goes to uh, to the the Chandler defense for the way they closed out the first half as well, mm-hmm. getting that that fumble recovery and keeping Saguaro from getting a second touchdown on the board before you know that horn sounded. Um, I, I just was I was impressed all around. I I, I think that um, you know guy everybody that is a big name on this team, sort of showed up and contributed. Yes, good to see Dede Hunter jump back into the fray because obviously yeah. he had missed essentially the last game and a half in the postseason. So for him to run rampant was good to yeah. see. And like I, you said, big name. I thought he was clearly the best player on the field mm-hmm. in that game. He, you know, he he's the reason that they... That they want it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he had over 200 yards rushing against Saguaro's defense. He had the long run. He had the, the touchdown run that closed the game out. Um, you know, Chile likes to talk about, you know, last year was the, the you know, Bajan versus Connor Soley. That was the battle. They met and 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 one person won, you know, and that's actually why I, I cast my vote for, for Day-Day Hunter because I saw some of the best players in the field on this. He was the most dominant one in that, in, in that moment, you know, and I saw how hard they struggled to put Sal Point away without him. Absolutely. That, that was a really, really huge indicator for me of how important he's been to this team, and it's not just that this offensive line is dominant, and it's not just that, you know, it, it, they've surrounded him with great talent. Um, you know, I saw a, a couple of online trolls saying that, um, that he wasn't that good and, you know, that it just had to do with Chandler's offensive line. And, and that, that, that's just some silliness to me. He was a special Crazy. player who added a really nice element for Chandler this year. And I'll be very honest, I don't think they win that game without him. I agree. He has to sit and it's just Eli Sanders. I think that, that you probably have a different outcome. Uh, Gunnar Maldonado's f- forced fumble. Um, even though it didn't end up really me- meeting sure. any point, it just kind of delayed Saguaro's touchdown uh, that they ended up scoring with Denzel Burke. But when he caught up to Denzel Burke and ripped the ball out of his hands, I want to say that that was late in the third quarter. That sounds uh, right. When he did that, you know, that's just 
that ended up being two and a half more minutes that Saguaro didn't have to work with when trying to mount their comeback. That was a huge play. Um, Everything with Chandler was timely yeah. um, in this last game. Uh, Keon Grays is starting to look more and more like Chase Lucas on the offensive That's side fair. of the ball. That's fair. You know, uh, he, he's, um, he's a really, really special player, and I think he'll be a huge part of this offense from here on out. Mikey Keene made no mistakes. Uh, he continues just to not right. not make any mistakes. He also makes plays. Mm-hmm. Put that out there. He is, he is part of the reason why they won this game, but also you can't give things away to right. the team. And this was a defense that's full of people who – you know, are just waiting to feast on, any, mm-hmm. you know, no interceptions, right? No interceptions, correct. Right, and that's yeah. with Jacoby Covington and Keely Ringo mm-hmm. on the field. And, that's right. And that's with guys like Quentin Somerville, you know, bearing down on him and Damian Sellers, uh, who are just incredibly Who played a great second half, yep. Damian Sellers. And Will, Will Schaefer out there um, at, at linebacker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so are they very opportunists? And so, and Denzel Burke, who my first time I ever saw him, he intercepted Spencer Rattler. So yes, um, the you know Salenberg classic. Yeah, uh, so Mikey Keene when not he was turning, a trophy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mikey Keene not turning the ball over. And I thought that was enormous. Um, and then yeah, I mean you just uh, Lingi Havea, just so big on that defensive line. And, you know, I know Sawara was down there running back Israel Benjamin. I thought he would have been a key to really Uh keeping them in that game. I thought with Israel Benjamin, Sawara looked a lot more like Chandler than without him. That's right. They really didn't have a running back they could settle on, and they had to rely on Tyler Beverett and his legs toward the end of the game. Um, Great. I, I, I thought that it was chippy as it should have been. Those are two teams that believe that they're the absolute best and their attitude comes along with it. And yet after the game, everybody lined up and shook hands and yes. were good sports. Um, there was a lot it of was, respect. There was, there was a, a lot, lot of respect. respect. People, it was people, chippy but not dirty. Yeah. yeah. People trading jerseys, mm-hmm. uh, which was really, really cool to see. Some of the uh, some of the Islander kids for Chandler passing out lays to the uh, Sawara, Sawara kids. kids. And that's awesome. Had good performances. Yeah. Um, it was. I mean, it was cool. That was. The, what did you think? What did you guys think of the environment? I love the fact that these games hopefully will continue at Sun Devil Stadium. It's very intimate. Um, I thought there would be a few more people, but at the same time, the noise level, the intensity, certainly did not lack. Um, I thought it was. This may not be the best word, but festive. I thought yeah. people were. Uh, People enjoyed themselves and were all about their teams and showed out support. The uh, the rain in the second half of the game made it feel even more um, detailed and grind like a let's get after like a football word game. I remember forever. Yes, like the second the entire second, second half, half was played in rain. Was played in the rain. Absolutely. Yeah. So this was um, I enjoyed it. I mean the the camaraderie that. Everybody has, for the most part, from on the field to, we'll say for the most part, the media members, everybody's last game of the year. I I thought it was uh, a good time. It's one of those games where you sometimes forget that you're a journalist, and it's like, wow, these are two great teams. But we also, we are working, but it's like, wow, this is a tremendous game, two great teams, a lot of terrific athletes, etc., I wasn't disappointed by a single like all no. these kids that have a bunch of hype. Not a single one of them disappointed me. I thought they all no, played. they all played mm-hmm. absolutely on both sides. Um, and even the the prospects that you that you know from the twenty twenty two class that I expected to yeah. you know do a little bit of something like the Karan Adams and mm-hmm. the Keon Graves, who I think you know is going to be yes, one of the best special. receivers yeah, he's that good, yes. you know we ever talk about in the state. And Adams um, is only going to get bigger. We know he's fast, yeah. <laughs> but he's only going to get bigger. Right. So that's um, you know the, these guys, Roberts, uh, the corner from Chandler. I, I was so so impressed. Um, and you know on the other side, uh, Saguaro, Sean Miller. I mean, I think you know. All, all these twenty twenty two kids that I followed last year, man. They, Sean they, Miller was keeping some drives going. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, it was, it, it, hey, that, that's, you know, the Miller-Grace thing, I think, is going to be a rivalry that we talk about for a while. 
Uh, it was kind of cool to see Sean Aguano in the stands. Yes. Yeah. Yes. College coaches out there. Mm-hmm. Bringing Herm out. Yeah. yeah. So yes, he, I, I got a picture of him sitting with mm-hmm. Herm up in the stands and, you know, walking him through some of the stuff. and Seeing Chase Lucas. Uh, yeah, at Chase the Lucas. End, uh, not even at the end, at the beginning more so. Yeah. I guess good. Tyler Johnson's uh, dad, Bill, played with uh, Brandon Buckner's dad. Oh, okay. Uh, in Philadelphia. So when mm. Brandon Buckner caught that tipped pass and, sure. and, and I had the pick six, I have a picture of Tyler Johnson like stepping out onto the field with his arms out. And then you see Buckner in the back with his arms out. And it's just, you know, they've known each other their whole lives. And so that was a pretty cool, um, that was a pretty cool thing to see. Um, you know, it was a, there, there's a couple other ASU players out there that played at a really, really high level that had some complimentary things to say you know jack jones was out there i pointed keely ringo out to him and he said and said like you know rivals has the two of you ranked about the same and he's like i just want to say like we're definitely not the same like, <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm the best that ever did it but that kid is for real and i thought that was pretty cool um yeah and so i i don't know it was just it was a really really cool environment for for a game i think it's something that we're going to remember for a really long time yes and i you know I, it's not even begrudgingly for me at this point i want to say that like the open division to me did what they set out to do mm-hmm. which was have a little bit more parity provide some more opportunity and give us an opportunity to see matchups that we've never seen before absolutely because especially with chandler high chandler got to play hamilton chandler got to play uh, Sal Point and mm-hmm. Chandler got to play Saguaro so. all in the same season. I think, yeah. he, and 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 Brophy also had a good year and they got to play them. Um, I think the only thing lacking in this season uh, that we would have wanted to see out of Chandler High um, was them getting to play against a healthy Pinnacle, and obviously that's completely out of their hands. Sure, right, right. sure. JD Johnson, you know, had to mm-hmm. medically retire with a heart defect. Um, but they did get to go up against Jack Miller, who's going to be a big time yes. college quarterback. You know, they did get to go up against Bajon Robinson, who's going to be a big time college running back. And then they got to finally play Saguaro for the first time ever. And you had all those Saguaro kids, uh, alumni on the side of the field. You had, you know, um, gosh, well, Lloyd Mills and, and a whole bunch of other people who had played uh, in the past for Chandler on the on the other side. And um, and then just jumping in for myself, that now that I think about it. I saw all three of Chandler's postseason games all against opponents that I had never really seen before. I had never seen a Chaparral game. I certainly had never seen a Sal Point game. And Saguaro had been five years since I had seen the Sabercats. So it certainly presented matchups that one doesn't see often and allowed more teams yeah. to be in the mix. This Chandler team is done. They're, they're not going to play in the Geico Bowl. Right. Correct. Um, I think that's the right move. I don't think they have a single other thing to prove. Mm-hmm. I think I agree. the schedule that they played has them beat up going through the premier mm-hmm. division and then jumping into to the, the open. Open, yeah, that's a lot. Who would they have played? Um, if because the games are at Bishop Gorman, the this games year. are at Bishop Gorman on the night of the twentieth and the night of the twenty first. Yeah, Friday and a Saturday. Um, if St. Thomas Aquinas wins the Florida Seven A State Championship, they're going to be matched up with St. Louis from Hawaii. I thought that Chandler St. Louis would be really, really great mm-hmm. just with the whole like Ohana culture of Chandler, but that's not the matchup they would have been given. They probably would have been given that Friday night, the the twentieth matchup. Um, still interested in possibly going out there uh, to to see the Geico Bowl and see some of those high school teams play, but uh, there won't be a Chandler High, and because of the nature of the open division playoff, I don't think that the so that invite that could have been extended to other Arizona teams is no longer going to um, to exist, and, and that's kind of a that's kind of a bummer. Uh, and so I don't think you'll see an Arizona team this year. Um, because usually they invite a, a champion. Right. Um, and if they were going to, I mean, maybe Williams Field would be the best. Yeah. But would be the best bet. I think Williams Field would probably have a hard time hanging with, you know, anybody who has a ton of speed from, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from another state. But, um, but, yeah, Chandler turned that down. I think it was the right thing to do. I agree. They end with their very first undefeated season since 1949. Um, in a year in which there were no playoffs to be had. You just kind of declared yourself champion. Um, where, which brings me to this, 13-0, and Open Division champion, they have won four titles in a row, mm-hmm. five in the last six years. Mm-hmm. Where does this rank? I was, something I was going to bring up as well. Uh, I think it, it's tough. I think it, it's tough. Yeah. Let me, let me explain yeah, why I think ahead, it's tough. Yeah. 
I don't know. To be fair to the Jacob Conover led team, right? Corona Centennial was a much tougher out of state opponent than Capital Christian. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I don't even think that that's conversational or debatable. Um, you know, this this team was special on defense. I, I, right. I love this defense. I just, man, if I was if I was to pair it up, I, I might. I like Jacob's junior year. I was gonna say I can't. J- Jacob's junior year was your, probably yeah. I was that was the year they beat had the no punt in the second half against over Perry. Perry. Yes, yeah. Uh, because that season also included uh, beating the living hell out of Pinnacle's defense in the second round. Where Spencer Rattler 52. went off in that game. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven, mm-hmm. seven fifty-two. Yep. So that, that that's a pretty impressive year. I would probably lean towards that year because. I that thought was about the year they the, lost to IMG. That is the year, and it's yeah. also the year that they lost to Mountain Point. Um, they lost. They were they beat did. up. They were injured. Right, yeah. they were injured. But I'm just saying Billy that is, Bolger came they in. had a two loss season that year. Yes. Yeah, they they lost to they lost to IMG, and they lost their quarterback against IMG. That that was mm-hmm. that IMG team outside of their quarterback was a scary, scary sight. Yes, um, and I think that if they keep Conover, maybe they have a chance to win that game. But they did lose to Mountain Point by a field goal, you know. And then after that, their offense just uh, mm-hmm. I think what Sean but they were missing a couple players against yeah. Mountain Point. They were the record, and it was yeah. and they were hung over because at that one point they were because they played eight they three were, games in eighteen days. Yes, they were two and two. After the first four games of that year, then they rattled off the next, I guess it would have been the next ten. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, at, yeah, so after only scoring 21 against Mountain Point, mm-hmm. they had their their totals in every game, 51, 59, 58, 55, 48 to 19 against Brophy, but I think they had like 48 nothing at halftime mm-hmm. in that game, uh, 50 to 14 against Hamilton, mm-hmm. um, and then 49, 77, 51, and 49 in the playoffs, and then they had to take several knees in the Geico Bowl game against the Florida State champion Miami Northwestern, Northwestern team in order to not drop 70 on them. That game finished 55-20. to 20. Wow. So, uh, I mean, that was a two-loss team, though. It was a, it right. was a two-loss team. Yeah, they were 2-2. Two and two. Um, yeah. You know, and, and yeah, they yeah they were missing Conover, but they did, they did lose twice. Um... I was impressed also in uh, 2016 when they lost to Mountain Point 52 to 7 and then came back and yes, beat them in, in the, the final. That was at uh, 36 That was at Cardinal Stadium. Yeah. Cuz that was another year yes. where they beat they beat. And it's ironic so we're saying five of the last six the one year they didn't win it well, and yes I realize there's injuries of Where course. was the most talent? Well yeah there's yeah. no Colby T- Colby Taylor uh, Chase Lucas and Nikhil Harry in their senior year they did not win one. Yeah, but yet they've won five of the last six. I thought yeah. that I just like I think that Hamilton's 2017 that didn't win a state championship was their most talented. I thought that Chandler's 2015 squad had the most like college prospect talent on it, and obviously mm-hmm. you know it doesn't work out for them. Um, that team was loaded. Nikhil went to the pros. Chase Lucas did a thing with ASU. Hamilcar is like the Mm, Hamilton received with yeah, Oregon yeah. State. Yeah, he was on that team. Um, He's doing some things. Yeah, yeah, he led the nation. That was the year we loss. went. No to, big deal. That was the year we went to uh, Bishop Gorman. If I'm yes. correct. Yes, that's. Uh, What's amazing is just in the regular season alone since 2013, which was the year that Chandler first beat Hamilton. Yes. Uh, they lost to Mountain Point in 2013 in the regular season. They lost to Mountain Point in the regular season in 2014 in the regular season. Didn't play in 2015, got blown out by them in the regular season in 2016, uh, lost to them in the 2017 regular season, and they haven't played since. So they are 0 and 4 against Mountain Point in the regular I mean, season. Wow, that's since, since 2013. Johnny Johnson said that that's a rivalry now. Yeah, wow, I mean, that's funny. Yeah. He did say that. That's 0, and, so. 0 and 4 in the regular season against against Mountain Point, and then I don't know if they have four. I think maybe they against in-state teams. I don't think they have four losses in the last six years outside of I don't think so because they've got Hamilton in the Hamilton in the um, semifinals of 2013. Yes. Um, Desert Ridge in the semifinals of 2015. Yeah. And I think that's it. That would be it from yes. Yeah. Because the rest of that losses are all the out of state teams. Corona Centennial IMG Academy. Um, Bishop Gorman beat them in 2015. 
So as it stands now, I guess it's 26 wins in a row overall and 33 in a row against in-state opponents. So would you put this above any of Conover's championship teams? If you were to line them up against each other, you're saying. Yeah, I guess that's what I. I guess that's what I mean. I, it, 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 I'm taking Conover's junior year, that ju- that team. I'm taking as the best as of the best. all of them. Do you think that this team beats any of the three? Because those teams all got maybe Conover sophomore year. year when they beat Mountain Point. So the sophomore year when they beat Basha forty eight six, Desert Vista sixty two seven, Perry sixty two twenty. I mean, and Revenge Mountain Point thirty six. Hold on, this, this is a tough question for me to answer because I've always said that Conover is my Derek Jeter. You have of high school football. So now you guys are asking me to which you don't feel like this. Mike, Mikey Keene was a fourth year of Jacob Conover. Just not making mistakes. Making no, every Mikey Keene was a special Mikey Keene. Yeah, I think that, you know, he was, you know, he he did. I don't even think we've seen the best of him. I think we're going to see the best of him next year. Oh, I think I agree. With, okay. with, with an experienced Jalen Richmond, Keon Grace. So do any of Jacob Conover's teams beat the Bryce Perkins-led 2014 Chandler High team? Oh, now you're asking me to compare Derek Jeter and Babe Ruth. Okay. Um, man, that's tough. Um... Man, I think Jacobs Junior. I, 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 I think Jacobs right. Junior year is that's mm-hmm. the standard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, because if if Jacob, played, I don't think Jacob knows how much I actually appreciated him. If he played the full season, do they beat IMG? I don't know if they beat, I don't IMG, know if they beat IMG, but they beat everybody else, and that game isn't a fourteen point game or whatever it was because that was what two touchdowns. Thirteen. IMG dropped one at the very end. I mean, they, yeah. I don't so know if they move. beat IMG. I don't know if they beat IMG. But keeping that game close alone, I mean, I know that they don't want the, you know. Bolger played two and a half quarters. Mm-hmm. Or no, Bolger he got hurt on the last play. Though. Oh, the he, first. He, yeah, played, so he played the he second played, half. Yeah. Bolger was a great quarterback. I, Bolger could have started for a whole lot of teams that so year. So they, do they beat Mountain Point in the regular season? Yes. Okay. With Conover. Right. And because they were missing Anderson also. Drake yeah. Anderson, oh, I forgot about it. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, Oof. healthy. And that kid still rushed for 2,000 yards on the season. Missing yeah. a game. Missing two games. None of these offensive lines had to face Brandon Buckner. <laughs> so, it's fun It's fun to speculate, though. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Day Day Hunter and, and Brandon Buckner are very, very special players. But 100%. The, line, the linebackers on the 2019 Chandler Wolves, I think, will go down in history as one of the more dominant units. Gunnar Maldonado was was probably the best special teams player that any of these squads <clears throat> has ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I think my favorite team, and I know it's hard to play favorite, my favorite yeah. team would be either the 2014 or the 18 team. I'm going to lean towards the 18 team um, just because some of the personnel, it was... Uh, obviously, Jacob's senior year. You knew DeCar- De Carlos senior, De senior year. For a long time. Uh, yeah. Librock. I yeah. just thought that I really Zach enjoyed Bowers. Zach Bowers. Yeah. Yeah. Bowers. yeah. I enjoyed that team. And I think I was probably more fired up for that particular championship game for a lot of reasons than any of the others. So yeah. I think that might have been the 18 team might have been my favorite team. I think the 14 because they came yeah. off that crazy semifinal win also. I think the 2014 team is the one that kind of sticks out to me special. because they opened the year against Centennial and then I traveled out with them to see them beat Dylan McCaffrey and the Valor mm. Christian team out in Colorado. That Centennial um, team was that the Josh Rosen team? No, Centen- no. Uh who was on that? No, no, no. That was St. John Bosco. That was the that year same before. F- okay, that was the year before. Okay. Um, no, the uh, Centennial was, was Peoria Centennial. Was the Centennial. Oh, okay. From here. Oh, they opened. Uh, okay. Yeah, oh, so wow. they opened the season against Centennial. Uh, and then w- the thing about that year was when they came and they played Hamilton, um, Hamilton hadn't lost at home in 10 years. Oh, that was it. Yes. And they beat them 56 to 24. And then they blew out Perry, blew out back. So these are all teams that we follow with this podcast. Mm-hmm. So we saw them blow out Hamilton, Perry, and then Basha, and then re get Basha and Hamilton in, in the, the championship. Playoff. And that's oh, the that's only right. Chandler Hamilton championship. There hasn't been yes. 
you know, so that that they they've met in the playoffs several times. They've met a million times, and it's always a special game. Mm-hmm. And, um, but, but that's the only time they ever played. So, yes. um, and that one, and that had, game was closer than the final score in because I believe it was twenty seven. Yeah, was the final, but it was a closer game than that. Yeah, and that and that team obviously had. You know, Justin Jan, who went to mm. Colorado, Nikhil wow. Harry, who's with the Patriots now, mm. Chase Lucas, who's in his third year starting at cornerback sure. for uh, for ASU. I think Dustin Woodard was a young guy on that team, and he's mm. now in his fourth year starting on the okay. offensive line of of uh, Memphis. Um, Bryce Perkins, who's about to play in the Orange Bowl, sure. um, was was on that team, and so you know you, and then you had some you know younger guys who absolutely um, who were who were still coming up, who ended up doing some pretty special things, and so to me that 2014 team, their first championship. Kyrie Woods was he on that the defensive the kid yeah. at San Diego State now? Kyrie Woods was he on that? He yeah, might have been on that so. team. Yeah, yeah, I think he was a younger guy on that. Mm-hmm. Um, on that team, that that team was uh, was really really special, um, and they've they've all been fun. I can't yes. wait to I can't wait until the day when we're talking about like which Perry team had the best championship run or which Basha team mm-hmm. had the best championship hey, run. Mike is going to be running the podcast when we do that. <laughs> My eleven year old. But I mean, but no, you're right. It, it's great. These, to, we know these we, things don't last forever, right? Because we watched the the. Fall and now reemergence of, of Hamilton, Hamilton. Uh, over that time, and you know, I, I, there were some whispers this year about whether or not Mike Sadebski was the right guy, um, and whether he would, you know, he came all the way out here from Michigan to coach a losing football team. No, he is the right. This uh-huh. is the, I'm, again, you know, more than anybody when he talks about football, you can see how much he loves the game, and you know. Uh, he's super, super dedicated to that team. I think he's going to do some special things out there. Um, yeah, I doubted them this year, but you they know, back back. When was the last time somebody went from th- you know three and three seven and to seven. a game away from the championship game? Right, which mm-hmm. they probably should have honestly mm-hmm. uh, been in. Um, which is, you know, one of the one of the reasons why it. it you wonder. You know, did Chandler? I think that that'll people will wonder. Did Chandler face the best? Team. They got to face Saguaro, mm-hmm. which is one of the best programs in the history of this state, and this is probably the most talented Saguaro team from top to bottom. But the best team was probably the one that was up two touchdowns in the second half. That's on, fair. <clears throat> on so or up by ten points in the second half on Saguaro before their quarterback broke his collarbone, um, and the team that was up on Chandler in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think that that was, you know, that that would have been a great championship to see. Sure. And if Chandler had an opportunity to prove it against that team, then maybe we'd be talking about this being one of the all-time um, classics. Different, yeah. Uh, but still, great game. Oh, incredible yeah. team. Can't take anything away from them. The only undefeated state champion in Chandler high school football history. Wow, which is weird for a team that has five titles, uh, yeah. which now matches. What Bellis did at Hamilton. Yes. I mean, Hamilton has mm-hmm. seven titles, but now we can start talking about the fact that since 2003, which is 16 seasons, 12 state championships in the city of Chandler. That's awesome. That's crazy. That's why we do this podcast. Yes. That's right. That, that's, that is absolutely. So now it's, uh, fellas, it's been good as always. This was uh, a lot of fun. It always is. Each year has a different theme to it. Um, this was certainly a uh, another championship year, which I think we're all very grateful for. We appreciate Rick Garrison for allowing us into his program. I mean, we got to uh, we got to cover ACP a lot more, uh, yeah. a team that I think we'll start really diving into uh, a lot more over the next handful of years and beyond. That's for sure. Valley Christian. I mean, just Kirk Sunberg. Yeah, and the way couldn't he have a better has. coach for a better community. That like Absolutely, match made in heaven. Yeah. very true. We'll see what goes on with uh, their Perry Pumas over the next few years. Um, hopefully, Basha can rebound from some injuries. Yeah. Um, post Purdy era for for Perry. Post Purdy, yeah, this will be the first. We'll find out what this team. No Purdy, no really James. This will be the yeah. first time in five years that we don't call their names in 2020. But uh, overall, fellas, it's been uh, as I like to say, it's been real. It's been fun, and it's been real fun. Chili, Ralph, Brett, we're out.